temporary incapacity. What is it? And what should you do if you ever become temporarily incapacitated? Temporary incapacity would be, let's say, heaven forbid, I have a car wreck and I have a situation where I really do not have capacity. I'm not competent. Maybe I'm in a coma. There is a period of my life where I do not have capacity. Who can handle my money, pay the bills, pay the medical bills, make healthcare decisions for me. I have the choice of appointing an agent under a general durable power of attorney to handle my financial affairs if something ever happened to me, even if it was for a temporary period of time. In addition, I have a choice under a healthcare power of attorney to appoint an agent to handle my healthcare situations, and I should, someone that's going to make great healthcare decisions for me. In addition, under trust, if I have assets in trust, all our trust contemplate a, a situation where the trustee, if I'm the trustee over a revocable living trust that I create, and I'm managing the assets that I've placed in that trust, the successor trustee has the ability to step in, or a co-trustee if it's husband and wife that set up a joint or family revocable living trust, to step in and make those decisions over the trust assets and manage those assets while I'm temporarily incapacitated. If, heaven forbid, I don't have those legal documents in place, like a general durable power of attorney and healthcare power of attorney, my assets may become locked. No one would have access to them. In addition, there may be no one legally in place set up through a healthcare power of attorney to make medical decisions for me. In that case, the option would be to pursue guardianship. A loved one would have to apply for guardianship for you to be able to access your financial funds to pay the bills and to make financial legal decisions for you. And on the healthcare side, Someone can be appointed through a guardianship to manage your health care. And a guardianship is a much more, there's a lot more heavy lifting. It is a court proceeding where I would have to be found incompetent at the time. And a guardian who applied would need to be appointed as the guardian over my money and legal affairs and over my placement in health care affairs. Now, once a guardian's appointed, if I regain competency, I come out of the hospital, I come out of the coma, I come out of the situation that I was dealing with, and I get pretty much back to normal, I regain competency, then there is a court proceeding after that if guardianship has been put in place and I have been found incompetent by a court of law, I can sue, essentially, I can petition the court to reinstate me as a competent person. So I can restore my competence and get a court order that removes the guardianship and gives me back all the rights uh, of a competent legal adult in the country. So at that point, I would be able to take back over my healthcare affairs placement as well as legal and financial affairs once my competency was restored by the court. Whereas, in a huge difference, you're talking about a lot more money, time, resources spent by family and me in pursuing the guardianship and restoring competency, and we handle both those things. But that's really in my situation where I do have trusted individuals that I can appoint in a general durable power of attorney and a healthcare power of attorney. It's really, a, it would be a failure on my part to plan ahead and to put in place the general durable power of attorney and the healthcare power of attorney that would not require a guardianship and it would not require a restoration of competency because once I regained competence, once I came out of the coma, got back to living my normal everyday life, I would go ahead and resume my activities of controlling my finances, legal decisions, and healthcare and placement decisions myself without needing an order from the court to do so. I would just step back in that role and let my agent under the power of attorney know that, hey, I got this, okay? Planning ahead is always the best thing to do. 
Um, it takes time to really slow down a second and say, don't you get frustrated when you keep running into problems because you didn't slow down and plan? It takes really slowing down, stopping, doing some planning, strategic planning, but that can set you up for success in so many areas of your life. Estate planning and elder law is no different, and that's what we do. We help individuals pause, have a discussion with myself or one of our experienced attorneys about what best, best fits their life, whether it's temporary incapacity or another situation that they want to avoid. Long-term care planning, benefits planning, protecting your hard-earned money and property. I'm Greg McIntyre with McIntyre Elder Law, and I would love to help you pause and put a plan in place. I would offer a free consult to discuss that. You can reach me by calling 1-888-999-6600 and take advantage of that free consult or go online and schedule right on our calendars at mcelderlaw.com scheduling. Thank you.